two, three. Testing one, two, three. Check one, two. Check one, two, three. Hi, everyone. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're ready to learn a little bit about signs. Uh, it should be a fun lesson. I was surprised how many signs there actually are. I probably if I wanted to could have talked about a uh, hundred different a hundred different signs. Anyways, we'll start in about twenty four seconds. Let me just test out some things. Sounds like everything's working great. That's awesome. Um it's good to see all of you in the chat. I see Key Park is here. Audie the Thai, Vitor, Yaroslav, Noriko. Good to see the members. Good to see Dave here. Hey, Dave. How are you? Hope you're having a good day. Uh, Mercy is here as well. Okay, we'll get started in one second. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about signs. Now, before you think this is going to be a lesson about street signs, um it's more than that. It's definitely about all of the signs or most of the signs that you would see if you were in a public place. So, this is a great English lesson to watch before you travel to an English speaking country because I will talk a little bit about street signs like this stop sign here but I'll also talk about signs you would see in a restaurant maybe at a park uh maybe when you go for a walk with friends in an English speaking country you will see signs like this. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about signs. Before we get started, I do wanna say hi to a bunch of people. Hi to John Wedge, Noriko, Adi the Thai, Dave the Canadian of course is here to moderate the chat. Williams, Korean class, Harry 300. Let me scroll back here. Vitor, Ralph. Um it's hard for me to I can see the members names easily without my glasses. Wanda Prado is here. Uh Mohab is here. Nina Aldona, Farouz. So, many people here. Good to see all of you for this lesson about signs. If you have a question during the lesson, please use the link that will be shared in the chat to ask it uh, and every 10 minutes or so during the lesson, I will pause and answer some questions. Um I was gonna mention I saw John Wedge there. John Wedge, I made an English lesson that's coming out on Tuesday where I tell a story at three different speeds. Actually, if you watch the whole video at five different speeds, Based on uh, last week, you suggested that I make an English lesson where I talk at my normal speed. So, I wrote a little one minute story and then I read it three times, slow, medium and then at my full, fast, normal English speaking speed. So, look for that on Tuesday. Anyways, what else should I say? I talked about questions. I oh, if you want to use the chat to have fun English conversations, please do that. That is what the chat is for. But I think we should get this lesson started. Let's do that. Keep off the grass. This is one of my favorite signs and this is a sign that people who have a really nice lawn, people who have really nice grass growing in front of their house. Did you hear that? That was a okay. A bird just flew into the window. I hope it's okay. I'm not sure if you heard that sound. Um I hope it's okay. Um anyways, when you have a really nice lawn, you don't necessarily want people to walk on it. Usually, grouchy old men put signs up like this in my opinion but if you live in town, if you live in a city and you have a really nice lawn, you might put up a sign that says keep off the grass which simply means don't walk on my lawn. If you could please stay on the sidewalk, I would appreciate it. And then of course, we have standard signs like the stop sign. A stop sign is fairly universal around the world. Um most people when they see this sign with its eight sides, it's an octagon, they know with a red octagon even if it didn't have the word stop, I think many of us would recognize that this sign means if you're driving your car, stop driving your car at least for a little bit. We also use this to tell people to stop doing other things. There's a little stop sign on the door of my school and it says stop. Do you have any of the following symptoms? And then it asks you if you have any of the you know cough cold uh, symptoms. So, a stop sign can mean stop your car. It can also mean that you should stop and do something before you enter a building. We of course have speed limit signs. In Canada, we use the metric system. When I leave my house, I'm allowed to drive 80 kilometers an hour. 
when I get to the town where I work, I need to slow down and drive 50 kilometers an hour. It's important that you know what the speed limit is when you're driving a car. In Canada, you're kind of allowed to go above the speed limit a little bit. You're not really allowed but I'll just say this. I usually drive about 85 maybe even 90 kilometers an hour in an 80 zone and in a 50 zone, I often drive 50 maybe 55 never any faster because I don't want to be unsafe. I don't want to speed in town where there might be people walking or little kids playing. When you're in a restaurant or maybe when you are in a store, you might need to go to the bathroom. You might need to use the restroom. In Canada, we often say washroom as well but this sign that you see here is a a fairly normal sign that you will see if you are looking for a place to go to the bathroom. Um if you don't know where the bathrooms are, you can always ask uh and someone will usually point to a sign like this that says restroom or it might just have the figures on it indicating who's allowed to use which bathroom but definitely if you're at an airport or in the mall or at a store or in a restaurant, uh, if you need to go to the restroom or use the washroom or use the bathroom, whichever word you want to use, um that's the sign you would look for. Sometimes at school, uh the caretaker, the janitor mops the floor and the floor is a little bit wet and that can be dangerous. So, they put out this sign, caution, wet floor. So, when I'm walking down the hallway, if I see this sign, I know I shouldn't run. (laughs) You're not supposed to run anyways. Um you might see a sign like this at a mall. Very common to see a sign like this after people clean an area up. There was a sign like this in the grocery store the other day because someone dropped something and the bottle shattered on the floor and then they came and cleaned it up and mopped it and then they left this sign there. Caution, wet floor. The reason you put this sign up is because you don't want people to slip. You don't want people to slip and fall if the floor is a little bit wet. Then, of course, we have the do not enter sign. This is similar to keep off the grass a little bit. It means that you should not enter whatever building you are in front of. So, if you're walking along and you see a sign that says do not enter, you should probably not enter. It might be dangerous if you enter. It might just be a place where people don't want you to enter but often you will see a sign like this. Maybe if you're in the mall and there is a store that's being renovated. So, the store is closed and they're changing the store, fixing up the store for it to be something else. There might be a sign that says caution, do not enter because they don't want you to come in. They don't want you to enter the store. When I walk along the road, there are what are called hydro poles in Canada. Um you might call them telephone poles. You might call them utility poles but they all have a little sign on them that says danger, high voltage and then on mine, it actually says do not climb. So, don't climb. Um when something is dangerous, we put a sign on it indicating that it's dangerous. Danger, high voltage. Um you might have a storage cabinet on a farm that has chemicals in it and it might say danger, chemical storage. So, whenever something is dangerous, when something can harm you, we often put a sign on it that says danger and then we explain why it is dangerous. So, Generally, anything that has a lot of electricity will have a sign that says danger, high voltage. This sign is very common in Canada. In my part of Ontario, you really can't smoke anywhere. It's rare for you to be able to find a place to smoke. So, we have a lot of no smoking signs. You'll have these in restaurants. You'll have these at the mall. You'll have these in stores. In Canada, you cannot smoke in public places. Even outside of some of our buildings, people are not allowed to smoke right by the door. So, in Canada, sometimes you can smoke away from the door of a building outside but close to the entrance and exit, there's often no smoking signs as well um because uh well, it's kind of bad for you. I know some of you may be smokers but uh 
it is not healthy. Just, just so you know. I know you know that. We also have what's called a caution sign. So, when something is dangerous like electricity, we have a danger sign. When something could be dangerous, when you could slip and fall, when you could trip. By the way, trip is when you're walking and then you you walk into something and you trip. Um so, you might see this when you're getting onto uh the subway. There might be a little um sign on the floor that says caution, watch your step. You might have this on the bottom step of a um of a stairs where it just says caution, watch your step. And yellow is a very common color to use for caution signs. Um so, caution. So, again, the difference. If it says danger, it's a little more serious. Danger means if you go in here, you will probably be injured or something bad will happen. Caution means be aware, be careful because the situation might be a little bit dangerous. And then here's another uh road sign, uh construction ahead. This is very common in Canada in the summer. A lot of road work happens in the summer. So, when you're driving along, you'll see orange signs with an arrow that mean if you could please slow down because there are people working ahead to improve the road or fix the road or fix a bridge or install a installing a stoplight. Um whenever you see a construction ahead sign, you should slow down. You should be aware of what's happening and you should look for some kind of construction in the next few kilometers or miles if you use miles in your country. And then this is uh similar to the keep off the grass sign, no trespassing. If you own a store or a building in Canada and you have a problem with people coming on your property at night, you might put up signs like this. Private property, that means it's not public property. It's not a park. It's not uh, a parking lot. It's private property. You own it. So, you do not want anyone to walk on your property. So, you add no trespassing. Trespassing is when you walk across someone else's property. If you walked on my farm without my permission, you would be trespassing. Whenever you walk on someone else's property in Canada, you have to ask for permission. You don't need permission to go to the park. You don't need permission to go to the mall. You don't need permission to go to what we call public places but you can't just walk on someone's private property. And if you do, they might eventually put up signs that say no trespassing. Hey, let's look at a few questions everybody. Let's do questions for about 10 minutes. Uh let's see here. This is from Yaroslav. Morning, the wisest teacher Bob. How is life? Good. Very good. I'm very much enjoying today. I believe the signs are universal in general but maybe there are some interesting ones in Canada. I'm gonna add a word. Take care. I do think they're universal. As I was searching for them, I wanted to make sure I found the signs that have words on them so that people, it's nice because you can connect the shape and color of the sign to the word because you probably have the same shape and color for some of these in your country and then you have the word in your own language. So, it's a nice lesson to connect the two words together. This is from Renata. Hi, Bob. How old were you when you got your driver's license? In Canada, do you also get your driver's license at the age of 16 like the United States? Thank you, sir. So, it's different now. When I turned 16, I went to a driving class and then I got sort of the day I turned 16, I got my beginners. So, I could drive a car as long as my mom or dad or someone with a license sat in the passenger seat um and then I took a class to learn how to drive and four or five weeks later, I got my license. Now, it's different. Now, um when you turn 16, you get your beginners. So, you can drive with a person beside you who is licensed for nine to 12 months and then you take a class and then you can get um your driver's license. So, little different than it used to be. We have a graduated system now. You can get one license and then a few months later, the next one. Uh this is from 
Zhao Yu. Hi, Uncle Bob. In China, the second subject of driving license te- is to test the meaning of traffic signs. I wonder if Canada also has them. Thanks for your teaching. Yes, part of your written test is that you need to know what each road sign means. Uh, let's see. Peter says, hello, sir. Do you have any do you have anything written on the roads on the places where you can cross? Usually in the UK, there's a look right or left. We don't have the look right or left signs but we do have places where it's clearly marked that it's a pedestrian crossing. The sign will say pedestrian crossing. Um you still have to usually push a button and then the stoplight changes but yes, we do have areas for crossing. André Padron, bonjour, Monsieur Bob. Est-ce qu'il y a des affiches en anglais et français à Montréal? Oui. Yes. Are there traffic are the traffic signs in English or French in Montreal? I believe they're in both. They were in both languages. I think they're all in French now. I think it's becoming stricter. So, yeah, don't quote me on it. Uh what about ads and other signs? Oh, I didn't do any of the math like the addition sign, the subtraction sign. I didn't do any of those. Anyways, I actually I sounded confident about Montreal. I think all the signs are now just in French but I'm not 100% sure. Um from Huawei, which is more commonly used? Washroom, restroom, bathroom or toilet? In my part of the world, washroom is very common. Restroom is very common. Bathroom is less official but it is used and we rarely use toilet. I know in the UK, people might say uh, I need to I need to use the toilet. We don't say that. We just say oh, I'm just gonna use the washroom for a sec or I need to go to the washroom. It's very Canadian to say washroom. I think restroom and bathroom are more American. Uh Can says, hello, I don't have a question but I am from Vietnam. Well, hi, Can. Good to see you. Uh let me just fix my camera there. There we go. Um next question from MB. What is your favorite road sign? We gotta flip the N and G and why are you wearing a coat? Do you have COVID-19? No. Our house is cold in the morning. We do not keep our house very warm at night and on the morning where I do a live lesson, I don't turn the heat on until I'm done my lesson. I like to keep it somewhat cool in here because my computer and the lights and the camera all generate a lot of heat. My favorite road sign is the one that says 110 kilometers an hour on the highway. We changed our highway speed limits on some of our highways a year or two ago. So, now you can go 110 kilometers an hour. Uh let's see here. Azam, when I was visiting Yosemite Park, California, I saw a strange sign. Bear proof food locker in campsite. I should sleep in a thin layer tent but my food is safe from the bear. Yes. So, a lot of places in Canada and the US where you camp, if there are bears, they might provide a bear safe locker for your food uh and yes, you will just be sleeping in a tent but your food will be safe. So, that's that's a great sign by the way. Um it's nice if you go and there's a a bear proof food safe. Um Gergo says, is it true in Iowa there are signs that say warning suicide deers? Well, it doesn't say exactly that um but in my part of Canada, there are quite a few signs that say basically warning deer crossing or that there's a common um it's common for deer to cross the road. It's very important when you drive at night especially in the fall and winter that you watch out for deer in my part of Canada. And Iowa, I would imagine, has the same uh thing that it's important to be cautious when you drive because sometimes deer do run across the road. Juliana, hope hope hello, Bob. You mentioned about restroom. Is there a nuance with lavatory? So, LA, gonna change the E to an A. Also, do people still say I need to go number one, number two to excuse them to go to the toilet? So, we don't use the word lavatory very often. Um it's Sounds like an old word to me. Um and children will often identify whether they need to go pee or poop uh by using number one or number two. So, a parent might say if a child, a young, young child said, you know, mom, I need to go to the bathroom or I need to go to the washroom. 
they might say number one or number two. Number one is pee. Number two is poop. Uh, adults don't say that. Adults just quietly excuse themselves. They might say, oh, I'm just gonna use the washroom for a sec uh, and they won't indicate why they're using it. That's private. Private information. Um, this is from Nash. Hi, you totally are the best English teacher on YouTube. Thanks. On YouTube, by the way. Is there any chance, I'm gonna add the word there, to make a video to introduce your pets? They are so cute. Have a good weekend. Possibly. We'll see. Although, Walter is a little too excitable. He almost knocked my camera over one day when I was trying to make a video. So, a little tricky. Uh, Mahmood. Hi, Mahmood. Bob, I really like your English classes. When I go back to your old videos on your channel, I think holding paper is much better. Yes, I used to hold up paper when I did these lessons. I have not done that for quite a while. That was fun though, by the way. I used to hide behind the paper before I started the lesson. Um so, I'm gonna make sure I stick with questions that are about the lesson. Sorry, I I kinda went off track there. Um uh Bebo says, why do you think people ignore their health signs? Have you done this to yourself before? Um I don't know why. I think people get busy and they don't go to the doctor soon enough and have I done this to yourself before? Yes. I think everyone has had it where they have a pain or they have something and they avoid going to the doctor because they think that it'll just get better on its own. So, yes, I have done that myself sometimes. Hey, let's get back to the lesson here. Here we go. We have this watch your step. I think did I have the caution watch your step? I did. This is common when you're getting on an elevator. If the elevator sometimes doesn't line up even when the doors open, there might be a sign there. I was in a really old hotel once and when the elevator stopped, it was always a little bit lower than the floor and they their fix was they put stickers that said watch your step. You might also see this when you get onto a bus or uh, onto when you get on the subway. You might see this as well. Watch your step. So, be careful because you don't want to trip and fall. Remember, tripping is when you walk into something. Slipping is when you go like this. Like, it's slippery. Uh another street sign. Sometimes when you're driving, the road You can drive one way and if you turn around, you can drive the other way. There's a yellow line down the middle but sometimes it is a one-way street. Um sorry, I should have used the word street earlier. There's no one-way roads really. They're almost always called one-way streets and that means you can only drive in one direction. Um are there one-way roads? I'm not sure actually. I should find out. Let me check for a sec. No, let me. I'm not gonna worry about it. No littering. This is one of my pet peeves. I don't like it when people throw garbage on the ground. I don't like it when they throw trash on the ground. Often when I go to the park, um in spite of the fact that the park has lots of signs like this that say no littering and most parks in Canada have lots of garbage cans and recycle bins, people still just throw stuff on the ground. So, this is a sign that says Don't throw your garbage on the ground. No littering. Please keep the park nice for everyone. You might see this in other places as well but it's probably most common in a place like a park. Um I haven't seen this sign for a while but some businesses sometimes they have a sign that says um no shirt, no shoes, no service and this means that if you're just wearing a pair of shorts and you don't have anything on your feet. Um you're walking around in bare feet uh and you don't have any shoes on and you don't have a shirt on. They are not going to sell you anything. Some restaurants like it that people have a shirt and shoes on when they come in. Uh shoes probably because that's just healthier and more sanitary but uh you might see this in a place. Basically, if you are just walking around and all you're wearing is pants they're not gonna sell you anything if you go to that place. Uh, Honestly, I haven't seen this sign for a while. I wonder if they've disappeared now but this used to be pretty common. Some people love dogs and some people don't like dogs and some people don't like dogs in certain places. So, last night, I actually was at a park 
and the park had an area called a leash free area where dogs were allowed to run around but then it had another area where there was a sign that said no dogs allowed. So, when you see a sign that says no dogs allowed, it means it's not um permitted. I we've seen this sign a couple times now. I think it was in the uh previous one as well. The red circle with the line through it. I think everyone is aware this is the sign the symbol that means something is not allowed. It's forbidden. So, if you see um something like that with a cell phone in it, it means you can't use your phone. If you see it with a dog in it, it means no dogs are allowed. You may not bring your dog to this place. Have you ever been somewhere where you needed to I don't know renew your driver's license or maybe you've gone to the doctor's office and you don't have an appointment? There are places where it says take a number and they'll have a little device where you can pull a number out. We actually have this in our grocery store if you go to buy meat from the butcher section. You need to take a number and then when they call your number or when your number shows up on a screen, it's your turn uh to be served. So, sometimes if you go somewhere that's really busy, I know we definitely have these if I go to renew my driver's license. Now, I normally just do it online now but if I went in person to the uh place to do that, I would probably have to take a number and then wait until they call my number or my number shows up on a screen and then it is my turn. We have a number of what I call at your own risk signs. When you do something at your own risk, it means you're deciding to do something dangerous and no one is going to be there to help you. So, when you go hiking, you might hike on a trail and it'll say use this trail at your own risk. That means there's there's no fence. There's nothing stopping you from falling. Um so, be very careful. There are some pools that do not have lifeguards and so, they'll have a sign. There's no lifeguard on duty. There is no person here who's going to save you. So, swim at your own risk. So, when you do something at your own risk, you are taking responsibility for the dangerous or slightly dangerous thing that you are doing. Hopefully, that made sense. Um we do have these on hiking trails. There are some pools, etc, etc. Um no parking anytime. These are very common signs and I have kind of a funny story about this. We went for a hike two weeks ago and there were a lot of people parked in the parking lot and there were no more spaces in the parking lot. So, I parked on the street and I failed to notice that there was a no parking sign and when I got back from the hike, I had a $30 parking ticket because I didn't see the sign. So, if you see a sign that says no parking, two things. One, don't park there and two, if you do, you will probably get a parking ticket. $30. I paid it right away. You should always pay things like that right away because in Canada, if you don't pay your parking ticket, eventually you can't renew your driver's license. They'll say, oh, you have an outstanding parking ticket, sir. You must pay that before you can renew your license. This is another street sign. If you ever see an H in a blue square, at least in my part of the world, it means there is a hospital ahead. It means you are either at the hospital or you're driving in the right direction to find the hospital. So, the blue square with the H in it means if you are uh, maybe you've hurt yourself and you're in a strange town. If you see these, you're you're going the right direction to find the hospital that you want to go to. So, in Canada, uh, let me get this. In Canada, there are many places that have cameras and if they have cameras to prevent theft or to prevent vandalism. Vandalism is when someone damages a building or something. Um they will put up cameras so that they can record it but they might also put up signs that say you know parking lot under video surveillance security notice because cameras do two things. When you put up a camera, it prevents crime when a criminal or someone who's going to do something sees a camera, they might decide not to do it 
So, it's very preventative and it also records what's happening. So, it's nice to uh, let people know because then they might not do the bad thing they were thinking of doing. So, video surveillance signs are pretty common. You might also see safety first signs. These are very common in places where something could be dangerous. So, for instance, you can see here hearing protection required in this area. Often in a factory, when you walk into a factory, there will be signs that say safety first, hard hat required or uh, ear protection required or safety goggles required or safety glasses um, because they know that there is the potential that something bad could happen. It usually doesn't but if everyone wears their protective gear, um, it's less likely to happen. So, um, yes, definitely when you are usually like in a workshop or at a factory, you will see signs that say safety first. We also have just general warning signs. So, similar to danger and caution, I would say warning and caution are very similar. They're just saying uh, don't whatever it says below, uh, read it carefully. So, this one happens to say warning restricted area entry forbidden behind this point. So, what they're basically warning you about is that if you go into that area, the police might come and arrest you or someone might a security guard might escort you off of the premises. A lot of big words there but a warning is usually um information about an area or a thing um, you might even have a warning sign on a piece of equipment. Warning, do not operate this piece of equipment um, without wearing safety goggles. There might be a warning. So, it's basically, it's the same as caution. It's telling you to be careful in a situation. And then, of course, if you are in a building with multiple stories, so multiple floors, you might have signs that tell you what to do in case of fire. If you're staying at a hotel, it might say in case of fire, exit from the south stairwell. In case of fire, do not use the elevator. In case of fire, um break glass. Sometimes there's a fire extinguisher behind. I don't know if they have that anymore. In case of fire, use south stairwell and exit the building calmly. Um so, in case of fire, simply tells you what to do in a building if a fire was to start. Hey, let's do members only questions. Let me get that set up for a minute here. By the way, if you do not know how this works, members are people who pay just a small amount in order to be members of the channel. Uh if you do that, you support me. You help me buy the equipment I need to make videos. Uh you get your name in green in the chat. You get to participate in members only chat during live streams. Uh you get an extra video every week and a little mini lesson plan on Monday mornings. So, anyways, we're in members only chat mode now. I do have an announcement for everyone before I get started and that's this. There will not be a live stream tomorrow. I, it just doesn't work. I'm a little bit too busy tomorrow. I have a number of things I have to do. So, I will most likely be doing the live stream next week Saturday on the 12th. I haven't totally worked this out yet but just so you know, those of you that like the Saturday outdoor live stream on the first Saturday of the month, it won't be tomorrow. It will probably be next week. Anyways, Yaroslav says, when do you change the time in Canada? This weekend. So, Saturday night at midnight technically, we will get an extra hour. Um Juliana says, is sign language different in English speaking countries? So, I don't know a lot about sign language but I know there are different versions um and I think let's look up what the common version is in Canada. I'm guessing it might be American sign language. Let me just check my focus here for a sec. Yeah, that's working. So, most common sign language in Canada. So, we use ASL, the American sign language is the most common in Canada. So, if you're wondering what I'm doing, those of you, I'm answering questions from the chat. I will pull questions up on the screen in a sec. 
Uh, Lolly says, pas de questions, merci. Juste dire allo. Um, no questions, thanks. Just say hello. Noriko, morning, sir. What was the most, the less common signs of construction site when you used to work there? Take a lazy day tomorrow, please. I will take a lazy day tomorrow when I've done everything I have to do but um, it's gonna be a whirlwind tomorrow. All of the stuff I have to do. I have a few things to I have to help my mom do some stuff and there's other things as well that are taking priority. So, sorry about that. Um signs of construction. Orange signs that say construction are the most common as well as pylons. You know the orange cones that they put out. Those are two uh, clues that construction is happening. Juan de Prado. Hi, teacher Bob. Is there any restriction sign in Catholic or Protestant churches related to vestments? Thanks a lot. I don't know. I don't know what signs you would see. The last Catholic church I was in, I went to a French Catholic church um uh on a field trip and I don't remember what signs I saw. So, sorry. John Wedge. Hi, Bob. No question today. I'm practicing my listening again. Thank you for taking a class speaking at different speeds. Um I'm looking forward to watching. You are the man. Yes, it was fun to make. Uh it was so fun to make that I read it at three different speeds and then at the end, I tried to read it as fast as I could. So, what I'm talking about and what John is talking about is the video coming out Tuesday is a video of me reading a small story at three different speeds. In the first version, I do not use contractions or reductions. In the second version, I read a bit more quickly and I use contractions. And the third time I read the story, I use contractions and reductions and I speak at my normal normal speed. Yaroslav says that that is a stressful thing time changing. I mean, we changed last weekend. It is. I wish we would stop. That's what all I'll say. Juliana, also, can you please give us several of the frequently used idioms or phrasal verbs related to the word sign? Thank you. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we use like that's a good sign or that's a bad sign. When someone tells you news, like if they say, um, it sounds like, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, oh, it's really cloudy today. Oh, that's a bad sign. Like, we talk about things as if they mean something. I'm not explaining that very well. Sorry. Um Harry 300 Bob, how do you call it? How do you call a sign that tells us a direction of certain places? You know, New York turn right, LA turn left. Is it called a direction sign? We just call them road signs. We would say when you're on the highway, keep an eye out for the road sign that says exit 39 New York. Keep your eye out for the road sign. Uh, there will be a road sign that tells you when to get off the highway or there will be um a sign just the general word a sign that will tell you where to turn. Um let's see here. Let me get a question up from the form. From Noriko, we have different color traffic sign boards in Japan. Blue for general roads, green for highways so people can recognize where they drive. Is it the same in Canada? Generally, most of our signs are green. So, our street signs are green. On the highway, the signs are green. Sometimes, they're blue as well. I'm trying to remember now. It could be both. I'm gonna be driving a bit on Sunday. I will keep an eye out for what color the the road signs and street signs are. Um I know if you're looking like what's the name of this street? I guess it could be green or blue. Yes, I think I'm gonna have to research that one, Noriko. Uh, Ario says, hola, Mr. Bob. I don't know how to memorize any signs in English. Any tips? Well, try to draw the sign and try to memorize the ones that have the same shape and color as the ones in your country. That's where I would start for sure. Um yes. Jiao says, which signs do you have of, to be afraid? Um I'm not sure quite sure what the question is but um most signs that say danger make me afraid. If I'm somewhere and I see a sign that says danger um and then it warns me about something that would be um that would be something I would be worried about. Uh at Kali, I couldn't find a YouTube channel of English teacher Bob mentioned before. So, this is my main channel. I also have a second channel called Bob's Short English Lessons. You can check that out. Uh and the only other channel I usually mention is Brent's. So, that's speak English with this guy. 
um you can check that channel out as well. So, Bob's Short English Lessons would be my other channel. Let's see here. I'm clicking the wrong button. Srinath, do buses in Canada have seats specially designed for physically challenged people? Yes, definitely. And are there any signs for that? Yes, there's usually a blue sign with an an image of a person in a wheelchair. That's the universal sign in Canada for someone who's physically challenged uh who needs a special uh place to sit or park for that matter. And I don't think I have that sign on the list. Sorry. Uh let's see here. Lolly says hello to Wanda. Yaroslav says no more questions. Just have a terrific weekend everyone. Yes, thanks. I'm gonna flip back to the lesson. Wait. Jocelyn from Peru. One more question. Hi, teacher Bob. Good morning. Just a curious question. Is it true that in Canada, drivers always yield to pedestrians? No, there are areas where pedestrians have the right of way. Generally, at a mall, when you walk from the parking lot to the entrance of the mall, if you have to cross where people are driving, usually pedestrians have the right of way. That means the cars have to stop for pedestrians. But generally, in our cities, at crosswalks, there are times when it will say you can cross and there are times when there will be a light that says you can't cross as a pedestrian. So, you have to pay attention um to the lights. Yeah, be very careful. Uh pedestrians, there may be some areas but most places you need to cross at an intersection where two roads meet and there will be lights that tell you and control um when you can when you can cross. Uh Aldona, last question. What time is what time is it where you live? I'm fixing it. And what is the day? It is Friday, November 4th and it's 9 10 a.m. And we are gonna get back to the lesson. Here we go. Let me turn off members only chat for a sec. I did forget that. Where is that button? It's in here somewhere. I wish they made it easier to find actually. There we go. Let me have a sip of water too. So, a street sign. So, I was saying that all street signs are green in Canada. I don't actually know but these are. This is very common to see Smith Street and Cannon Street. A street sign is simply a sign that tells you the name of the street. Um sometimes it's hard to find them and sometimes I think street signs are too small. They're hard to read. When something is hard to read, it means you can't quite see the letters. Sometimes I'm driving and I can't see the street sign. So, I don't know what the name of the street is. That can be a little bit frustrating. When you drive around as well, you might see something that is for sale. Someone might have a sign in front of their house and we simply call it a for sale sign. Did you see that Jim's house has a for sale sign on the front lawn? He's selling his house. Or did you see that car? It had a for sale sign in the window. Some that car is for sale. So, when you own something and you don't want it anymore and you want to sell it to someone else, you might put a for sale sign on it. This is a very common type of sign, the open and closed sign. So, when you go to a store, hopefully it says open in the door or window and hopefully it doesn't say closed. When it says open, obviously, you can go in and buy stuff. When it says closed, you have to wait until the next day. So, often when people have a store, not often, I think all the time. If if you have a store, you have a sign that says open or closed. So, people know when they can come and shop there. We also have signs made uh that we call neon signs. I was gonna say they're made from neon. They're not made from neon. They are made from bulbs that have neon gas in them uh, and you can then form a sign that glows, a sign that is illuminated, a sign that gives off light and it's very, very cool. Sometimes you'll see a neon sign in the window of a store advertising something. This would maybe be in a restaurant or club and it's simply pointing to where the bathrooms are. It's, It's probably in the UK though if it says toilets. We also have what's called a digital sign. So, this is a sign where you can change what's on the sign. Often in front of um yeah, our 
a fast food restaurant. The fast food restaurant in my local town has a digital sign and the sign changes every few days. Sometimes it says buy two hamburgers today special buy two hamburgers for five dollars or it will say today um chicken burgers on sale. A digital sign is something that can be changed and it will have a different message on it every day. Rules. So, sometimes you'll go somewhere and there will be a sign that has rules on it. You might see this at a playground like this sign. It says basically it doesn't have the actual numbers but um it tells you who's allowed to play there. You might go to a campground and there will be a sign that has rules. No fire uh af- no fire before 6 p.m. or um no loud music after 10 p.m. There will be rules. So, whenever you go somewhere where people spend time together um you might see a sign like this that has rules on it. Hey, sometimes a store will put something out front called a sandwich board. This is a board that simply uh, displays some information. It's another type of sign. So, maybe you have a store that sells coffee and baked goods. You might put a sign out on the sidewalk every morning like this. You might put a sandwich board out that says um that you're selling a new type of coffee that day or that if you um are over the age of 65, coffee is 10% off today. But a sandwich board is a way to tell people what you sell. We have a sandwich board that we put at the road when we sell flowers that just says flowers with a big arrow pointing towards our farm. Um you might be driving and you might be going past a school. Uh in most places when you drive past a school, it's important to drive slowly because there are a lot of little kids around and we would call it a school zone. It's not a good idea to speed in a school zone. Sometimes you get a bigger ticket if you are caught speeding in a school zone because we want school zones. We want the roads around our schools to be very very safe. We don't want people to speed because we don't want anything bad to happen. So, you will see a sign like this school which means that you are in an area where you should drive slowly and watch out for little children. So, there are a couple of different ways to find parking in a city. Um you can look for a circle, a green circle with a P in it. It might be a blue circle with a P in it. It might be a blue square with a P in it but generally if you are in a city and you need to park your car, you want to find a parking lot and often you will see signs with the letter P in it. In my part of the world, usually green, sometimes blue um and in some parts of the world, again, it might be a square but you would use that to find a place where you can park. Um usually it costs money though. It's hard to find in a big Canadian city, it's hard to find a place to park um that is free. So, let's see here. You might have a sign that says hazardous materials. Now, this is another caution sign uh but you might have a sign that says um you know hazardous materials don't enter here without protective gear or protective clothing. This would be rare. This would be like at a factory or something like that. Um but uh yeah, it's just warning you that you should be careful and be aware of what danger lies ahead. You might have an informational sign. So, there were a lot of these in the last couple of years. Um there still are a lot of these. When you walk up to the front door of a store, when I go to work at my school, there is an informational sign and it says stop. Just like remember I said we use stop for a lot of things. Stop the spread of germs and then it kind of tells you what to do to prevent the spread of disease. Um we we have one too that says stop. Do you have any of the following symptoms? Uh fever, sore throat, headache and it asks you all the question. It is an informational sign to find out if you're feeling well. And then here is a really really big sign when you drive along a highway there might be a really really big sign that we call a billboard. A billboard is a sign that shows you that there's probably a restaurant ahead. That's usually what billboards are for. 
Uh, and if you get off the highway, you can go there and buy something. So, a billboard, it's probably the biggest type of sign that I know of. A billboard. Gigantic. A gigantic sign. Well, hey, that's the end of the slides but I am gonna work on questions for a bit. Um I'm just gonna check on something here. Um Dave's saying that's strange, Denis Picard. You're isn't showing your name in green which is normal for members. Um I'll check that out later, Dave. I'll find out why Denis. I'm I'll just that'll be in the recording so I'll have a look. Uh anyways, I'm going to uh reset my camera for a sec and then I'm gonna finish off questions. Let me find the question form. Um what time are you live and what is the day? So, I think I answered this question wrong. I'm normally live Friday mornings at 8 30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Friday. Um so, that's the day and then the first Saturday of every month, I'm normally live at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow's the first Saturday of the month but there's no live stream tomorrow. So, I think I answered that wrong last time now that I think about it. Uh let's see. This is from dot dot dot. What is your opinion about for example, the sign 18 plus in the road? So, you wouldn't see this sign on a road. You would see this on a movie perhaps um or you might see this in Canada, you have to be a certain age to buy cigarettes or to buy beer. Um so, that's where you would see a sign about age possibly. Let's see. Ameti, is there a difference in pronunciation of the when it's before a vowel sounded word and consonant sounded word or are or is it pronounced little fix there the same both times? So, if you go if you breathe the air, if you drink the water, the air, the water. I think when there's a vowel, we we kind of do blend it together, the air. You know, the air outside is really clear today, the air. I am saying the the air the air there there. I'm not saying there. So, the leaves are falling off the tree. I'm over pronouncing now. The leaves are falling off the tree. Um the the egg is frying in the pan. The egg. If I slow down, I am saying the the egg is frying in the pan. It might you might not quite hear it but it is there. So, Hani says, I want to learn English. How can I contact you if I want to contact you? So, you, you can't really. I do respond to comments. I don't give private lessons. I don't respond to emails um with when people are requesting that I um engage in conversation. I'm not trying to be mean. I just don't have time. So, I have time in my life to make videos. I have time to do live streams but I don't have time for one-to-one English practice. I may in the future when I'm teaching less. I do go every day and teach at a school. I teach every afternoon Um, but in the future, if I teach less in the classroom, I might start to do one-on-one lessons but at this point in time, uh, I do not plan to do that. Lolly says, is there a difference between on sale and for sale? Merci, yes. So, if you go to a store and something is on sale, it means it's cheaper than it normally is. Pants are on sale this week or bananas are on sale. If a banana is normally three dollars for a bunch, if bananas are on sale, it's probably two dollars for a bunch. When something is for sale, it simply means that you can buy it. Um Jen and I have flowers for sale during the summer. You can come to our farm and buy it buy flowers. So, that's the difference between those two. Good question, Lolly Lolly. Um wait a second here. Harry 300 has the same thanks, Harry. I must have missed that question. Is there a difference between on sale and for sale? I think I've hopefully I've explained that well just now. Um hey, thanks for hanging out and learning a little bit about signs. This is kind of a unique lesson because you are probably familiar with most of the signs. You just might not be familiar with the English words and phrases that we put on them. Signs are fairly common around the world and um fairly similar. Um I'm sure that in many countries, if you have a sign for no littering, you see the same symbols and icons and the words are just different. So, hopefully, this lesson helps you match those up. 
You should watch this again. In a couple days, this lesson will come out in a shorter format. Um it also comes out as a podcast that way. So, do take the time to watch it one more time or two more times and listen to it. It'll really help you remember what you've just learned. Again, no live lesson tomorrow. I will not be available tomorrow. Too many things that I have to get done tomorrow that have a higher priority. Sorry about that. I really hope to be able to do that live lesson next week Saturday. So, no live lesson tomorrow. Uh thanks to Dave for hanging out and uh making sure the chat works well and people have questions answered if they're having trouble. I will look into Denis problem with membership for sure but I think at this point, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna start saying bye. So, bye to Daria, Vitor, Lolly, um Wanda, Stas, CS team, Noriko, Harry 300, Dave the Canadian. Bye, Dave. Uh, have a good day. Yaroslav. I'm just waiting as the as people say bye to me, I will do that. Um Dave says no problem. Yeah, thanks, Dave. I do really appreciate it, Dave. Uh Ricardo. Bye to Ricardo and Sophia. Uh, let me just check my other view of the stream. Bye to Audie and Lolly Lolly. So, Audie is still getting messages deleted. I wonder, Audie, I wonder if it's because you're repeating words. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, it's cool that you said goodbye. And then let me see here. Yeah, I'm gonna tune Nightbot to be less restrictive. Uh bye to Key Park. Uh Pre, Sophia, CS Team, Anastasia, Henry, John Wedge, um, Ders Perez, Wilma, Ameti. Uh let's see here. Vitor, Dan, bye to all of you. Have a good day, everybody. Um, it's a beautiful day here in Canada. I hope it's a beautiful day where you are. And uh don't forget, fun lesson coming out on Tuesday. Um I'll be reading a story, a really short story by the way, at three different speeds. I think it will be fun for you. It was fun to make and I hope you enjoy it as